What's up, people? It's Mental Health Monday, brought to you by your girl, Demetra. Let's get this party started. It is my hope that everyone had a wonderful week, but this episode of Mental Health Monday is talking about gaslighting. Gaslighting is a type of emotional or mental abuse when someone uses manipulation and distraction tactics to distort the truth, making their victim question their own reality. It can happen in any type of close relationship, including romantic relationships, but also between family members, friends, and co-workers. It's also called cohesive control, which is illegal, which is not illegal in the United States. Let me say that again. Coercive control is not illegal in the United States. However, emotional abuse often escalates to physical abuse. So a person experiencing gaslighting early in a relationship might be at risk of physical violence later. In a USA Today article on October 3rd, 2019, the United States is in an abusive relationship with the president. At that time, we know who the president was. As a therapist in clinical practice, I'm trained to spot the signs and offer strategies to help people cope. Abusive relationships are extremely dangerous, and this is no exception. Donald Trump's gaslighting has led the country into a spiral of doubt, anger, and despair. End of quote. The effects of the president's gaslighting was demonstrated on January 6, 2021. Contrary to what the Republicans may think or say, it has been proven and dangers, the dangers of having someone mentally unstable lead our country. Here are some signs of gaslighting abuse. No longer feeling like the person you used to be. Feeling like everything you do is wrong. Always thinking it's your fault when things go wrong. Apologizing often. Having a sense that something's wrong, but unable to identify what it is. Often questioning whether your response to your partner is appropriate. Wondering if we're too unreasonable or not loving enough, making excuses for your partner's behavior, avoiding giving information to friends or family members to avoid confrontation about your partner, feeling isolated from friends and family, finding it increasingly hard to make decisions, feeling hopeless, and taking little or no pleasure in activities you used to enjoy. If you experience any of these or a number of these, you may want to consider seeking therapy or before seeking therapy, you may want to consider having a talk with a confidant to see if there's something that may be off about you versus who you were before you were with your partner. Here are some signs of the gaslighting abuser. Trivializing how you feel telling you that people are talking about you behind your back, saying things to you that they later deny having said, hiding objects from you and then deny knowing anything about it, insisting you were or were not at a certain place. Gaslighters are prone to frequent lies and exaggerations. Here are some things a gaslighter may say. You're not hungry, you just ate gaslighting as a parenting tactic. I only did it because I love you, gaslighting as a way to show love. I'm not cheating, you're just paranoid, gaslighting as a way of deflecting blame. No one will ever love you but me, gaslighting as a way to isolate. You made me do this, gaslighting as a punishment. You're too sensitive, gaslighting 
as narcissism. If you've heard any of these things or multiple things similar, you may want to check with someone. Here are some other signs. You may be in the presence of a gaslighter. Why are you so defensive? Stop acting crazy. You're making that up. I never said that. You need help. You're so pathetic. That never happened. You're just thin-skinned. You're imagining things. You apologize without knowing what you did wrong. That's a red flag. There's an imbalance in power. One person makes all the decisions. The other person has absolutely nothing to say. You find yourself questioning your beliefs and opinions. If your point of view doesn't match theirs, then it's wrong all the time. They insist it didn't happen that way. Most interactions leave you feeling small or ashamed. You edit every word before you speak it, changing any thought that could possibly misconstrue, makes you, puts you in this place of, I don't know what I'm doing. You may want to seek help. Types of gaslighting abusers. Those with the learned behavior while growing up in a dysfunctional environment. Do you remember hearing any of those things that was previously said while you were growing up? You're not hungry. You just ate. Do you remember any of those things? The second one, those who are born with the need to control others. Those are typically found in the workplace. Has anyone at the workplace ever said to you, you're doing that all wrong. You always do that wrong. It ends up being on your evaluation that you continuously do something wrong that you know you followed the instructions precisely. Hmm. Maybe gaslighting. There is a direct connection between gaslighting and personality disorders. People with personality disorders such as narcissistic personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder may use gaslighting as a way to control their spouses, children, co-workers, or any other relationship where the person with a character disorder feels vulnerable. Since gaslighting is usually only one symptom of a much bigger problem, other noteworthy, noteworthy behaviors include the ability to charm during the early stage of a relationship, using pity as a mechanism to control, to trigger guilt, extreme anger over anything rejection related, stalking, whether online, in the car, or in person, this behavior is often found with those who gaslight. Where can gaslighting occur? The short answer, in any type of relationship. Any type of relationship. An intimate relationship, friendships, school, work, church. Yes, I said church. It can happen in church. Examples of work and church gaslighting. Example number one, work, typically from a colleague or manager. They invalidate what you know to be true, forcing you to question the facts and ultimately yourself and your ability to do your job. A supervisor gets angry and defensive when you question his or her instructions. This is a true story. I'm your manager. I tell you what to do. Hmm. In church, typically anyone in a leadership position, same thing, invalidates what you know to be true, forcing you to question the facts and ultimately yourself and your ability to do your job or properly comprehend basic understanding. Example, the Bible says what I say it says. True story. 
Malachi 3 and 10 states the following, just the A part. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat, M-E-A-T, in mine house. Other translations say food or produce. Only one says income, but references food. In both cases, gaslighting has occurred. In the case of the manager, he demonstrated his intent through his response that the instructions were more about control than it was about the task. In the case of the leader, it's not so obvious to those in the audience who may be accustomed to the illusionary truth concerning tithing. From my earliest days of being in church, that's all I ever knew. It was instilled to me that I should tithe for the primary purpose, purpose so that God would bless me. However, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I reasoned as a child. But when I became a grown woman, I put away childish things. If you think you may be a victim of gaslighting, ask yourself these questions. Is there something that just isn't right, but you can't quite put your finger on it? Do you have less self-esteem than you used to? Do you doubt your abilities to function despite what others may say? Do you feel confused? Do you feel like you're constantly overly sensitive or just being dramatic? Do you distrust yourself? Do you doubt your opinions? Do you feel isolated? Recovery from gaslighting requires recognition. It is hard to recognize your own thoughts as real if the only person or persons or group you're around are those who are telling you they aren't. If you find yourself answering yes to some of these questions, you may want to first consider reaching out to an old trusted friend that has no associations with the abusing person or group. Why? Glad you asked. Because there's a type of gaslighter that will infiltrate your circle. Additionally, you may need to seriously consider an exit plan, and you don't want to tip off the abuser. This other type of abuser could be what's called a tribal gaslighter. Tribal gaslighting is when the abuser reaches out to your circle of friends, family, co-workers, etc. in an act of desperation to further victimize, traumatize, and most importantly, control. If these people believe the abuser, it may potentially cause the victim to be isolated. Keep in mind, the typical gaslighter is charming, a master manipulator, and a liar. Here's a true story. A friend of mine was in the process of divorcing her husband. The husband reached out to a couple of her friends, explaining to them how wrong the woman was for leaving him, stating that he loved her, the child, was a good father, provider, etc., and just didn't understand why she would suddenly just get up and leave. Unfortunately, one of her friends actually believed the husband. She called her friend and lamb blasted her for treating the man that way. Unbeknownst to the friend, the husband had been cheating on the wife for months to her knowledge. She had become, she, he had become verbally abusive, threatening her emotionally with statements such as, who's going to take care of you with a child? You can't make it out here on your own. You don't have anyone else. Or so he thought. After the friend finished with her rant, the wife said to her, and this is exactly why, I don't have people in my business nor do I trust anyone. Needless to say, that was the end of the friendship and, of course, the marriage. So don't be surprised at how far a narcissist or sociopath will go in their efforts to hold on to their victim. This is why knowledge is power. Doing it this time, I didn't know anything about personality disorders, and nor did she, or the various different forms of mental illness. Again, the people perish for the lack of knowledge. How to maintain your sanity and safety from gaslighting. Stay in your reality. Trust your gut, your intuition, your discernment, whatever you want to call it. Do your research on gaslighting and trauma. Know 
name and maintain healthy boundaries. Use I statements. Do not engage in escalating or triggering conversations. Take a time out. Learn tools to manage your anger. Gaslighters are highly skilled at goading and prodding their victims to a point of rage. Protect yourself. Create a network of support, spiritual community, healthy friendships, therapy group, 12-step program, healthy family members, and let them know that they are under no obligation to interact with or respond to tri tribal gaslighting if that occurs. Abandon the relationship if the abuser doesn't agree to mental health assistance and proves they are committed to getting better. Some abusers will admit they have issues, agree to assistance, but won't follow through. This is another last-ditch effort of manipulating their victim into thinking they can be trusted. No. This concludes our edition of Mental Health Monday for this week. I hope that you learned something that will assist you as you go along in life. However, if you feel that your safety is at risk and you are in danger, call 911. Do not hesitate. Not all gaslighters are physically abusive, but if you are experiencing domestic violence or feel that your physical safety is at stake, or your spouse or partner is escalating in unhealthy behavior or participating in tribal gaslighting, or making threats to your support team or loved one, take steps to keep yourself safe and alive. Your mental health affects your physical health. Let's make it a priority to have a happy, healthy, functioning mind. This is Demetra. I'm out and ahala.